Hi, and uh, welcome to Austin. Uh, I saw a tweet the other day that this is the first time that uh, somebody had been here since 2006, the last ApacheCon in Austin, and it's the same for me. Uh, it's great to be back here in Austin uh, and talking today. So, um, Rich introduced myself, me as the president of the foundation, but the first thing I want to do is re remove that title, because anybody who is around Apache knows that titles don't really mean anything other than the more grand your title sounds, the harder it is for you to say no. Um, <laughs> Rich is the executive vice president, and Rich doesn't say no when we ask him to help organize a conference, which is an awful lot of work. So thanks a lot, Rich. So many of you here will know what the Apache Software Foundation is all about. This is um, something from our, um, our front page. Um, it says that we are an organization that produces software for the public good. And that's really important to understand the public good part of this. As a foundation, we only exist to create software for everybody. The technical decisions that are made within the projects are by those projects. And they make those decisions for the benefit of everybody in the community that is contributing. You can't buy influence in the Apache Software Foundation other than by paying people who are going to contribute and earn merit within the, within the project. So as a foundation, we don't exist to manage the projects. We don't exist to guide the projects, so nothing like that. We only exist to support the projects. And that's particularly important because we're for our focus is on the communities. It's on the people who create the code. We have a mantra of community over code. Some people prefer community before code. In both cases, it means the same thing. If we look after the community and if we provide an environment for a community to thrive, then good code will emerge from that. So that's what the foundation is all about. But it takes a lot of time and effort and resources to provide that kind of support to our organizations. So I want to, like Rich, start with a big thank you. Theo, if you could follow to that link for me, please. Um, we have sponsors, and these are our sponsors. Theo's going to sc scroll down the page for us. And we have plenty of platinum sponsors. But these people, all of these sponsors, all they do is give us money. Now, all they do, you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, is that all? Come on, what else can we have? Um, they give us money, but they don't expect anything in return. We give them a thank you page, and that's it. We have a bunch of gold sponsors. There's one logo missing from there, as I found out this morning. We should have Bloomberg in on the gold sponsors as well. Again, no influence over the projects or even the foundation. We have a bunch of silver sponsors. We also have a bunch of, um, I forget what we call our bronze sponsors. As the, as, the, uh, as the lower tier. All of these people are critical to the success of the foundation. And every one of those sponsors gives us more than money. They also give us resources within the communities. The very last classification, the infrastructure sponsors, are particularly important in the sense that whilst they don't give us money, they give us goods and services and things that our infrastructure team need to support our projects. So I'd like to give a round of applause to all of our sponsors. Thank you. Thanks, Theo. Um, OK, so we consider ourselves a reasonably important organization in the sense that we produce software that's of value. But we're 15 years old this year. And in fact, our first project, the Apache web server, is 20 years old. And I have in my hand a rather grand document with a wax seal and all sorts. It's very posh. And I'd just like to take a moment to read you what it says on here. Be it known that, whereas we are pleased to welcome Apache Software Foundation, an all-volunteer, non-profit organization, to Austin for their Apache conference and celebration of their 15th anniversary. And whereas Apache products power half the internet, manage exabytes of data, execute teraflops of operations, store billions of objects in virtually every industry, and enhance the lives of users and developers worldwide. And whereas Apache has achieved its success with an all-volunteer community comprised of 505 individual members and 4,081 Apache committers collaborating across six continents. 
And whereas, we extend best wishes that this gathering of open source community will increase knowledge and collaboration on the technologies and projects driving the future of open source, big data, and cloud computing. Now, therefore, I, Steve Adler, Mayor of the City of Austin, Texas, do proclaim April the 13th to the 16th, 2015, as Apache Software Foundation Days. That kind of recognition comes about because of you. And all of those committers, all those contributors, all of those users who provide us with feedback, the community that we're here to provide support for. So we're 15 years old, but we keep growing. If we could follow the link, the first one, please. Um, this is a graph of the growth of the foundation over the years. Right over here on the left, 1995, the first blue line was the creation of the Apache web server. Um, so this was a group of people. There was no foundation at this point. It was a group of people who got together to share code. This feather up here that you see is actually from that very first group. There's a very famous photo, or famous within Apache at least, uh, where that feather appears. And it's considered a part of our history, a very important part of our history. It signifies that group of people who came together in the first instance. We fast forward to the year 2000, and the second little blue line indicating another project was created. That was actually the conference committee. It wasn't a software project. It was the start of the foundation. And the, first, the second project within the foundation was the conference committee, because if you're going to look after community, you need a conference. At that point, the, founda the foundation was created. It was the Apache group that said, hey, we've got to protect the IP in this. We've got to make this happen in a way that means our work, our effort, is for the public good. And we all owe a debt of gratitude to that original Apache group who 15 years ago set up the foundation, which in terms of its bylaws has changed very little over the years. It still exists the way it was envisioned then. So thank you to the Apache group for doing that. Now, you can see from the red line that the foundation continues to grow, and in fact, the pace of growth is increasing. So we're doing well as a foundation. If we could go back to the slides, please. Our growth is bringing more and more diversity to the foundation. We have over 62% of our projects are Java projects, but we have nearly 40 languages represented within the foundation. The expertise that we have in the foundation is really quite amazing. If you've got a problem in almost any, real, uh, any language in use today, there's bound to be somebody somewhere who can help. We also have diversity in the terms of the domains that we address. We've gone long past the point of being a web server, and we cover over 30 different domains, things like libraries that are intended for reuse, network servers, web frameworks, big data, database, network clients, etc. Again, that diversity brings a huge wealth of knowledge that we share within the community to make all of the projects stronger and better. Which brings us to another point that we find on our home page. That we are a, 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 um, we're not simply a group of projects sharing a server, or many servers in this case, but rather a community of developers, and increasingly a community of communities. So there are plenty of places you can host your code. There aren't so many places where you can build diverse communities that feed off one another in the way they do in the Apache Software Foundation. So Rich promised we'd say what we've done uh, with the sponsor's money. Here it is. Uh, this is actually the full year, not since the last, uh, the last Apache Con. So the middle column is the FY15 budget, and you'll see that we intended to spend uh, something in the region of $250,000 more than we took in. This really isn't a problem. We've got plenty of money in the bank. This was by design. The infrastructure team had identified a lot of things they wanted to improve and requested a, a much larger than usual budget. We approved that budget and the infrastructure team actually hasn't spent anywhere near what they asked for, although I believe there's a lot of expenses going in this month because we're getting towards the end of the, uh, of the year. 
Um, but the, the team have worked extremely hard to, to improve our infrastructure and keep costs down. Now, anybody in this room who does infrastructure for their company will probably be amazed at the budget that our team have. I'm going to dig into what that money is spent on in a few moments. But they work on a shoestring and keep those projects alive. Our second biggest expense is media and publicity. Um, I'm going to dig into that too in a few moments and tell you about how that's broken down. The third line is administration, that's things like legal fees, accounting fees, or executive assistant, things like that. Uh, the Travel Assistance Committee is a very important committee. Um, this is a team of people who ensure that people who couldn't travel to ApacheCon without some form of financial help have an opportunity to get that financial help. And we have some people in the room who've been brought here with the assistance of the Travel Assistance Committee. Uh, and I think we should welcome those people and thank the, the committee for ensuring they're here. And then there's the other category, which is lots of other things. The biggest chunk in there is, is brand management, where we're registering trademarks and so on. The FY16 budget doesn't look that much different. Um, less being spent on infrastructure. They, they've worked off a lot of that debt, the technical debt, uh, but continue to do so in the next year. So let's have a look at infrastructure. We have something in the region of 50 machines across five different co-location environments. We have eight, uh, we are using eight cloud regions across multiple different cloud providers. We've got something in the region of 180 download mirrors um, that provide fast and efficient downloads for our software around the world. That doesn't, by the way, include the service that SourceForge provides for OpenOffice. OpenOffice has a particularly large download requirement, and SourceForge have created a solution for us there. Over the last year, over 1,700 infrastructure tickets have been opened and closed, and over 2,000 Git commits. The last number on there, 16 contributors, is a particularly interesting one. We have six um, paid contractors in our infrastructure team. So 10 of those people are volunteers within the foundation. That's one way we keep the cost down as low as possible. And this happens across the whole of the foundation. But these are the people who um, really make sure that everything for their projects is working well. There are other people as well who don't actually end up committing to Git that also support activity there. We have those contractors that I mentioned. Those are the ones who are on pager duty, who make sure that our services come back up uh, quickly and efficiently. If anybody's ever interested in how the infrastructure is doing, you can go at any time to status.apache.org. And last night when I looked at it, despite the fact that most of our infrastructure team have been traveling to get here over the last few days, it said everything is peachy. Everything was working. And that is more often than not the case. We consistently get um, very high reliability. So there's many of the infrastructure team on the front row here making sure I praise them aplenty. Um, so thank you. And thank you to any other infrastructure I can't see because you're not pulling faces at me. <laughs> um, media. Uh, media and outreach is uh, another contracted position. We at the foundation, we never pay for software development. And we don't pay many people. We pay people in infrastructure because we want the machines up and running when they go down in the middle of the night. We also pay people in media and relations. And we pay an executive assistant who does a lot of the paper shuffling and coordination and things like that for us. But other than that, everybody else is a volunteer. In case of the media and relations, we need to be able to react promptly to media requests. Hence, we have a contractor. Plus, we're engineers. We don't know how to do this stuff. So over the year, we've done a total of 35 press releases. 281 informal announcements. We've worked with 26 different events, awards, and outreach organizations. Uh, we've responded to 111 media requests, which results in 20, over 21,000 press clip clippings. We've conducted 30 analyst briefings, resulting in Apache software being uh, considered in 478 analyst reports. And we've been very active this year in getting videos from various events around the world up on YouTube to try and get individual projects mentioned. Now, all of that work tends to be focused on foundation level uh, items. We're not talking about individual projects. 
With over 160 top-level projects and a total of 300 different initiatives, it's not really possible for the foundation to do detailed media engagement for each of those projects. So we have an entry point which then works with the project communities to give the responses that are necessary. Now one of the things that I personally want to look at over the coming year is helping those PMCs to help themselves more. There are problems, uh, not really problems, there are difficulties with PMCs doing their own media because, as I said, we're all engineers. Now, in the Apache way, any contribution is recognized as valuable. So if you have people in your teams, in your companies, that are not necessarily engineers, that doesn't mean they haven't got things to do. We can use media people, we can use documentation writers, we can use pretty much any skill that's available. So let's have them coming into the projects and be recognized within the projects so that the foundation can leverage this resource to provide more support for more projects. Uh, if you want to know more about what's happening in the foundation, in a, in a, you know, instead of waiting for the next ApacheCon, you can go to uh, our wonderful Whimsy tool, uh, whimsy.apache.org slash board slash minutes. We'll take you to all the approved minutes. I'm getting applause from one of the infra team. So. <laughs> Good, I said something they like. <laughs> um, uh, that will give you uh, access to all of the approved minutes, so they're usually a couple of months behind. Um, if you want more up-to-date information, you get all the announcements and so on, then you can go to the uh, announce mailing list. You can subscribe there by sending a mail to announce-subscribe at apache.org. And that's where all the, uh, the, the media outreach materials go, quarterly status updates, and other useful information. So that's what we've done over the last, um, last year. That's how we spent our sponsors' money, etc. I want to now switch gears a little bit and start looking forwards. Start looking at, okay, what are we going to do over the next year? Now, before I start doing this, I have to make it absolutely clear. What happens over the next year is what the volunteers within the foundation do, not what I say is going to happen. What I'm going to talk about is something that I think is important and I am going to be putting my time into, whether I continue in my current role or whether I, uh, I, I'm, I'm just active as a member within the foundation. This is something I want to focus on. And I think it's important that everybody in here who is a part of a PMC also thinks about doing some of the work that I'm going to talk about. So first of all, let's think about what Apache is. Apache is an innovation machine. You know, the proclamation said it all. We, we, we do some really quite amazing stuff, and we do it for public good. We have an amazing level of knowledge and expertise. We have unbelievable creativity. Our individual members and contributors and users are all highly motivated. We have personalities. Boy, do we have personalities. <laughs> um, we also have really good diversity when we look at the diversity of languages and technologies and things like that. When you put all this together and you crank the machine using the Apache way, the Apache way that talks about community over code, what you get is amazing code that is reusable by anybody in any environment for any purpose. It's amazing what we manage to do on the resources we have available because of people like you. There's one area, though, where I think we can do better. Diversity. So I've talked about diversity from a technical angle. I want to talk about diversity for a number of other angles as well. So why do we need diversity? Well, there's a number of quotes we could use. Um, so, for example, Walter Lippmann says, when all think alike, no one is thinking. And I like this quote, especially in the context of Apache, because over 15 years, those of us who have been around for, um, in my case, nearly 15 years, but in plenty of other cases, that full 15 years, we feel like we've considered everything. We've considered every option. We've made our choices. That's the way it's going to go. But if we continue to think like that, if we don't listen to different opinions, then we're not going to continue to uh, improve the processes, improve the environment, improve the communities. Margaret Heffman said that for good ideas and true innovations, you need human interaction, conflict, argument, debate. Now, we're not short of any of those things. <laughs> Definitely not short of any of those things. 
But it's healthy. We want more. We want that interaction, conflict, argument, and debate. We need people to stand up and think differently, to think and, and challenge the assumptions that we've had and over the 15 years. Barbara Harrison said there's no original ideas, only original people. We have to listen to those original people, even if the ideas they're coming don't sound original. Things change, the environment changes. We need to revisit constantly and look at different things. We need more diversity to make this happen. So let's look at diversity in the tech industry as a whole. Here in the US, African Americans make up 6% of the tech industry, whereas as a population, they make 13%. Latinos, it's 7%, whereas in the population, it's 17%. Now, yes, I know somebody could be Latino and African American. That's fine. Whichever way you slice it, it's under representation. Asian Americans, on the other hand, it's 15%, whereas the population is 5%. And most people seem to think that the reason for that is that technical education is, is greater within the Asian American communities. And so what that says is education can make a difference. If we look at women as a different way of looking at diversity, depending on which report you say you look at and where in the world you're looking at, between 10 and 30%. I mean, even at 30%, that's significantly less than the population. So we have a problem in the IT industry as a whole. And we've been aware of that for a long time. We just have to look around this room and we see that there is an increasing level of diversity, which is fantastic. But it's not as diverse as it perhaps could be. So what, are, can, what can we do? Well, in the short term, there's things like the women's luncheon that is happening here. So if, uh, if you're not aware of this, this is happening tomorrow, uh, 12 to 1.30. It's going to be on the 17th floor. Um, I forget the name of the room it's going to be in. I didn't have it when I, I set up these slides. Um, but they'll tell you on, um, on reception. There's no need to register for it, although you do need to be a woman. Um, or at least identify as a woman, I think is the correct way of saying it. Um, there's, it's really aimed at just being time to connect on site. Okay, it's about chatting about your engagement with the ASF and any mutual interest. There's no presentations, it's an informal uh, meeting, just to get together and chat. Okay, so feel free to pop along to that if you want to. And if anything comes of that about how we can help with making women more welcome in this environment, please let us know. That's great for the short term. What about the long term? What can we do looking further forward? Well, less than 1% of the AP exams, 4 million AP exams taken in the US last year were for computer science. Less than 1%. So we're just not getting people into the industry. Only 5 to 10% of US high schools teach computer science. So again, we're not getting people into the industry. Remember the stat about Asian Americans? Because the education level was higher, there was a better representation, in fact, a higher than the population, representation of Asian Americans in the tech industry. Education is important. Education hits diversity in the industry and consequently hits diversity in the ASF. So what can we do about that? Well, we're not here as a foundation to fix that problem. We're here to produce software for the public good. There's one thing that we can do straight away, produce software for the public good that can be reused in classroom environments. Let's make it possible to reuse our software in classroom environments. Okay, we're not educators. We can't write course materials. We're not paid to do that kind of thing. But we are fantastic volunteers. We have a huge range of fantastic volunteers who are willing to provide support, not just because it's important for their job, but because it's just the thing to do. That's what we do as a foundation. So I think that we can help our volunteers do more to help the education system Within the, uh, within the world as a whole. So um, I invited Teals to, to come along um, to this event. This stands for Technology, Education, and Literacy in Schools. And this is a great organization. It's a grassroots organization that is getting computer science into high schools. They take people like me and you, and they show us how to engage with teaching in high schools. It's a very small investment of time on our part, and the benefits get multiplied 
an unbelievable amount. You get comments like this one from Michael Braun, a teacher, who said, we're taking the kids farther than I could, done, could have done alone. Now, there's a volunteer, a mentor, worked with this teacher, maybe just for one term. But after that term, he can reproduce that year after year after year after year. So the Linux Foundation have been very supportive of this idea. They've given us a slot in the program, which is later today at 5 p.m. If you're interested in finding out more about how you can volunteer a small amount of time to help, um, then please go along at 5 p.m. If you have a clash and you can't attend that session, then there is a, uh, a boff tomorrow, a birds of a feather session tomorrow evening, um, which you can attend. And if you can't attend that, you still have no excuse because there's a booth. Okay? <laughs> So please, just go along and find out what it's about. There's no commitment, but you might find that it's something you want to do. The very least, you can tell other people that this organization exists and that we can make a huge difference. Um, I wanted to quickly highlight this as well. This is something that um, we as open source developers might want to get involved in. Has anybody seen codecombat.com? Yeah, a few people. Do you love it? Nobody's, nobody's committing themselves. At least one is committing themselves. Actually, I love it. It's fantastic. What they're trying to do is get people to learn to program by playing a game. This is what they're trying to achieve. Come on, son. Your dinner's going cold. Oh, hang on a minute, Mum. I've just got to finish this level. And what that means is they've got to finish the program they're writing. Because the program controls the character in the game that solves the problems that the character faces. You can use a number of different languages, etc. Now, I immediately see a problem with this. I'm standing here talking about diversity, and we've got two stereotypes on the screen from this thing. So let's change it. Now, actually, Code Combat isn't as bad as it looks here. They do do a really good job of, uh, of involving everybody. So there's loads of ways that you can, you can get involved. You can create levels. You can create things for people to interact with, or things as they call them. You can write articles about how this can be useful. Think about this being applied to the Teals thing. Fantastic. Um, and of course, you can contribute code. It's an open source project that's driving this. Um, it's under the MIT license. Please go have a look at it, and hopefully more people will be able to tweet things like this. Um, this was, uh, I tweeted a few days ago, I'm a proud geek dad. My 10-year-old son just issued his first pull request, thanks to Code Combat, who were also the recipient. You know, this is fantastic. Um, if anybody have young kids, my five-year-old daughter, she loves the Turtles game. I forget the name of it now, but there's a Turtles board game which teaches kind of turtle programming language. She loves it. She wrote her first program doing that the other day. Fantastic tooling. The last point of diversity that we should look at is geographic diversity. This is a map of people who've identified where they live, so committers who've identified where they live. And we've got a pretty good coverage. We cover six continents. Um, it's really quite impressive. But when you zoom into some places, like China, for example, you know, China's one of the most populous city, uh, countries in the world. It has some of the largest IT companies in the world. Yet it's so significantly underrepresented within the Apache Software Foundation. Is this a problem? Well, we're doing pretty well without all of those contributors, but imagine what we could do if we brought that expertise, that different way of thinking into our communities. So um, about a week ago, um, I went to China and I, uh, I did a, a little bit of um, fact-finding. Uh, this was at a conference called OSTC, uh, where I did a keynote. And um, the, the, uh, the title of this conference was Community Over Code. And so I did an Apache Way talk as a keynote, and I talked about what Community Over Code means to Apache. And I was amazed at the feedback I'd gotten. People just didn't comprehend what I was talking about. You know, it was totally new to these people. Unlike the people in this room where, for many of us, it's second nature now. It's completely new. I went to a lot of smaller meetup groups. I think I did five or six in total. Um, I went to Linux user groups. This is a group called Kai Wen She, which is a, uh, a group promoting open source, true open source, the way we think of it, not, not just slapping a license on it and, and saying, there you go. Um, and I just found the same thing. The young people who are coming through education in that country are fascinated by what's happening in the West around open source and how it differs from what's happening in China around open source. 
I conducted a bunch of media interviews. This was a, 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 a five members of the media. And same results. They were, they were telling me that their readers are, are desperate for this kind of information. They want to understand how can they, as a country, not just as individuals, but as a country, engage with Western open source and bring Western, uh, Westerners to Chinese open source. Now, there's obviously problems with this. Language is a barrier. Um, we can, we can address those problems in various ways. But the biggest problem is probably culture. And we assume that everybody understands what we're talking about. But honestly, the IP, the, the copyright laws, the respective copyright laws in China are so different to how they are here. I didn't have a clue how different until I went out there. Um, my boss, who actually sent me to China, was there on a work trip. This was all stuff that I did on the side. Um, he describes China as not just a different country, but a different world. And it is. All the assumptions that we have, all those ideas that we have here in the West, don't apply when we start thinking about China. So what can we do about this? Well, the first and most obvious thing we can do is talk to the Chinese companies who are working with Apache software. So Alibaba is a company I've been talking with for about a year. And I originally approached them because of this um, JSTORM project, which is a fork of Apache Storm. And they've re-implemented a lot of it in Java. And I've been talking to them, you know, why don't you come and, and, and work with the community here? Um, it would be better for everybody. Um, oh, well, we can't do that because we, we're using Java and they're written in Clojure. And we can't do that because this, we can't do that because that. And I've been talking to them gently over the course of about a year to see how we can resolve this. And I sat down with them whilst I was in China, and the first thing they showed me was this issue in an Apache um, Storm issue tracker about bringing it back to Apache. Now this is a really good example. If there's anybody here from the Apache Storm PMC, you guys are doing an amazing job. These people have re-implemented the code in a different language and they're still having the conversation about bringing it back in and learning from that expertise and looking at what difference it can make to the community and to the project as a whole. And we as projects need to do more of this, not just for China. I've put China up there because I've been to China and I've talked to people. You don't have to go to China to do it. These people are perfectly willing to come to us. The language barrier is not a problem. Well, it's a problem. It's a, it's a language barrier. But they're willing to talk to us in English. Okay? Our problem is spending the time to understand what it is that they're saying to us and why they're taking the position that they do. Now, I've spoken to lots of people who are engaged with um, various things in China, lots of members, and I've got lots of volunteers who said, yeah, we really want to make a difference on this. Um, a few years ago, back in 2009, 2010, we had um, the Apache Roadshow, um, uh, which was in Shanghai and China, and I think we went to Sri Lanka as well. Um, and I've been asked by a number of people, including Kai Wen Sher, which was the group photo that I put in up there, about can we do that again? Can we take an Apache Roadshow to China? So if anybody is interested in doing that, please reach out to me and let's see what we can do. And uh, Rich, I hope you can, I can't say no to that. There you are. I hope you can't say no to that. I need your help. <laughs> so um, just to close off, uh, just to remind you, we're all about public good. We're all about providing support for our community. We're all about building that community so we can produce fantastic code. And, and by way of credits, um, here's all our top-level projects. Um, we have a few of them. I've not put the sub-projects up there because I've run, running out of time. Um, so I just want to close by saying thank you to the Apache group for starting this off uh, 20 years ago, forming the foundation 15 years ago, and thank you to the community, all of you and everybody within the Apache community for making Apache what it is. Here's to another 20 years.